And then you pull the tag end to form the knot, and then you slide it back down to the hook. When it's quite close, with a hook, always grab the hook with a pair of pliers. And then you pull it down tight to the hook. And you pull it very tight, and this is a knot formed. And as you can see, the tag end is pointing back up the line. Just get a snips now and snip off and leave it about half an inch. And this is the tag that I was talking about and that helps you, uh, helps the bait to stop sliding back down and masking the hook, which is important when you're, you're fishing because you want the hook point always showing out, out of your bait. And that for me there is the perfect knot for tying on a hook. Right, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you how to tie um, a single tuck blood knot. Um, this knot is used for attaching a link which is attached to a lead weight, or you could use this um, knot to tie a swivel to the top of a trace which you attach to a shock leader. Um, what I'm using here, I've got some 60 pound shock leader and I've got a, a link, a lead link clip um, which is attached to the lead. Um, all you do, you thread the, the line through the eye of the, the lead link. You wrap it round four times and then the, the loop that you formed on your lead link you get the tag end and you tuck it through there and then you just tuck it down slightly and one of the most important things you can do when you're tying a knot you must moisten it and uh, every person who normally ties a knot like this always uses a saliva so you moisten it down like that you can tuck it down a little bit and then you Gently pull it and the knot will slide up and form. And you give it a good tight pull. You can trim the tag end off. Even about an eighth of an inch. That is the finished knot. Um, this is a very, very reliable and strong knot. And it's basically one of the simplest knots you need. And it'll do the job very well. Okay, so Power Steel, this is a new line from Ultima. Um, probably like everybody else, we've all been on uh, F1 for the, probably the last 10 years. Yeah, that's and right. And how on earth were they going to actually better the F1 or bring another product into the range that was going to beat it? Well, Power Steel is definitely the strongest line I've used. Yeah, it's the, the bee's knees, isn't it? It's also knot strength's fantastic. Um, Cast brilliantly well. Again, beds well fantastically on your multipliers. You well, tried it on fixed board. Fixed board well, work, yeah. That's for me in the lighter diameters. This stuff just won't get anything better. I don't think. The thing with this line is obviously in the lower diameters, it still has that that the, the poundage there, so you can so you can actually use a lighter line where you where you normally wouldn't have done so, but you can do with this product. Yeah, yeah, and I think with it being a, a white line, a light line as opposed to a dark line, in the, the hot sunshine definitely stands up better. So I think a light line stands up better than a bright sunshine. So do you feel, I mean, you've, you've fished abroad quite a lot, Peter. Yeah, do you, that's do right. you find that uh, that uh, the, the clearer lines, or especially something like this, is going to work a lot better than, than say, uh, a red or a yellow line? Yeah, they, yeah, it could be massive, I think. Absolutely massive. Um, you know, you sort of advise anybody, if they're on a nice sand beach, have a little go, have a little go with the lower diameters as well, and just start, you know, it's just, you're going to enjoy your fishing so much yeah. more. You're casting miles further because your diameter's right down. You're not strength there, so you haven't got any worries about getting the fish in. No, go for it, give it a go. If you are using the lighter the lighter lines, use a, a tapered shot leader with something like that Yeah, as well. very, very much so, yeah. yeah. Um, just get your tapered leader to suit the line that you're using. Fantastic. Um, and obviously just to suit the lead you used as well. You don't, the beauty of it is you don't need to use such a heavy lead. If you're fishing in weedy conditions, that plain lead will just slide through the weed, whereas your big grip lead pulls in half the beach. Yeah. 
So the, the poundage that these are available in is from four pound to thirty, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Um, so there's, there's literally something there for everybody. You know, so it's not just for the fixed spools; it's for the multipliers as well. Uh, so people you use uh, the lighter lines on the fixed spools, possibly do a bit of float fishing that's as it, well, yeah. and also can use it for the heavier lines for their for their slightly heavier beach fishing yeah. or a bit of the, a lot like, a lot this, like this. Yeah. Yeah. So it's um, yeah something there for everybody. The knot I'm going to show you to tie now is a stop knot. Um, what you use a stop knot for, um, the, the, one of the main reasons is, is to uh, trap a sequin above a hook um, to act as a stop for your bait not to be slid up the line um, to keep the bait basically by the hook. First thing you do need to do, you need to take a piece of nylon about six to eight inches, snip it off like that, and then you need to, between the two hands, try and hold the line um, reasonably tight. Um, you get the red uh, memorex and you lay it parallel with the the white memorex and you wrap it round three four times and then the longer the end of the tag you lay back on top of the other two and then the longer tag which you laid back around you tuck back through four times one two three four Gently pull the knot. This knot now must be moistened. And then you get the two tag ends of the red Memorex and you pull tight. And there you have a stop knot tied. What you need to do now, you need to trim both ends. Again, leaving just a slight little tag. And there you have your completed stop knot. This knot doesn't damage the line that you've tied it on and can be easily slid up and down the line. This is a very useful knot to know, especially for on your hook lens to stop the, the baits being pushed up the line when you're casting out. Right, I'm going to demonstrate now um, a knot which is used to tie uh, a braided mainline um, to a nylon needle. Um, this is if, an important knot if you're using braided line um, because you always need like a mono leader, um, you know, to cast or to attach a plug if you're lure fishing or plug fishing. Um, the knot I'm going to demonstrate is a double grinner knot. Uh, firstly, now I've got some um, red Memorex, a 25 pound line, which is the leader and I got the braided main line. The first thing to do, we'll tie the braided knot first onto the, the red Memorex. You get the braided line and you lay it on top of your nylon line and you wrap it round four times. One, two, three, four. And you get the tag end again, you lay on top of the, the braided line and the nylon leader line. You don't tuck it through the hole or nothing, you just lay it on top and this, the loop you've formed with the braid, you tuck the tag end of the braid back through four times. One, two, three, and four. And you pull that and form the knot. Now turn the knot around, and then you repeat the same knot with the Memorex going around the braid. One, two, three, four, and again, the tag end of the nylon line, you lay next to the knot, like so, and then the tag of the nylon line, you go back through this loop that you created four times. One, two, three, four, and then you pull the Memorex knot around the braided line, And it's important when you're tying this knot on a braid that you tuck the knot down quite tight before sliding the two knots together. Now what I've formed here is a grinner knot around the braided line and a braided grinner knot around the Memorex line. Now what you need to do now is to pull the two knots together 
and what they do they slide up to each other and this forms a double grinner knot which is an extremely tight knot and a very very strong knot which is a perfect knot for tying a braided line to a nylon leader. Well done, Pete. That's a little different. You got it, mate. That's what you got there then. You got a ballon on the bottom on a bit of crab. Yeah, and a female cuckoo on the top. And a female cuckoo. Interesting using uh, two at rig, but I see you still got a rotten bottom on there. You didn't manage to lose that then. No. The difference between the ballon and the cuckoo, obviously, the mouths are shaped slightly differently. Yeah, much deeper fish, isn't it? The ballon as opposed to the cuckoos are really are quite a shallow rash. Yeah. Much longer mouth on the on the cuckoo with, with slight, slightly narrower, sharper teeth on the cuckoo, as opposed to the ballon. They really are a thick old set of teeth on that. Yeah, yeah, it's like a rounded, like More a grouper, rounded, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, very much so, yeah. You can see the, how the lips and the teeth, they grind in. Off these limpets and... That's it, limpets, barnacles, all kinds of bits and pieces off the rock. Um, very tough little fish. Yeah, they can manage to just tear those limpets off, can't yeah, they? Yeah, they're, they're very, very strong mouth. Well, George Powerflex. Well, I think you and I have probably been using this for at least 15 years, I would say. And Powerflex, just by the name, powerful product, flexible. Very that's good. exactly what you need from a shock leader, isn't it? Of course it is. Of course, not only as a shock leader, you can use it for making your rigs as well. It's a very supple line. It's a good line. It does a good knot. Um, so if you do your leader knot, you get a very small knot. Casting uh, organisations around the world like this line, so yeah. it's... It, it beds down well, doesn't it, when you're not in it? Yes, it does, very good. Either onto a swivel or onto a link. That's it, on, in the, onto your leader as well, yeah. Well, yeah. One of the key things as well, um, you and I both use crimps on our on our heavier rigs. It's very good when you're crimping down, and it, it, if, it, if you do need to slightly move the crimp on the uh, on the rig body, it never ever scores, does it? Not on a soft line, it, 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 it's very good on a soft line. It's excellent, yeah. Um, with the casting, um, probably why they had to have it in uh, in yellow. This is a this is this has uh, been endorsed by the UKSF. Yes. Uh, a lot of the other casting org organisations around the world. Uh, they need to have a line that is that they can see on the field. Nine oh. times out, nine times out of ten, they're they're casting over ploughed fields, and it's very very difficult to see any other line. So, key with this. Do you ever use this at night when you're fishing? Well, that's it. See, the lads at night. I, I like a clear line, but say there's a lot of people who like the orange line as well, so I can see when the gear's coming in. It's, uh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, there's a range, you've got a range of lines as well from a bangle, uh, 50 metre spools up to a four, you know, four ounce spool. So there's, it's targeted at everyone. We've been using this a long time, so uh, 17, 80 pounds we use as rig body. Uh, 60 pounds uh, shock leaders, but also making lighter uh, rig bodies out of the 40 pound as well. Yes, very good. It's very, like you say, it's a supple line. It does does do it on you. Know, you can make your flounder rigs out of it as well. Yeah, excellent. One thing that is absolutely key with a shock leader, no different to any other shock leader on the market, is you have to look at the lead that you're using. So if you're using a five ounce lead, you cannot use anything under a 50 pound shot leader. That's right. If you, if you work to the 10 to one, you won't go wrong. With all two of those, you've got 60 pound there, it will break 60, 60 plus. Pounds. Yeah. It's 60 pound, you've got to do the 10 to one. And this will not let you down. Okay, this is a two-hook flapper, probably one of the most common rigs used on the beach today. 
Um, it's got a multitude of uses, right, for fishing for your whiting and your codling. Um, out on the rocks, clean beaches, it can do it all pretty much, and it couldn't be much simpler. We're on a lead link, which then goes to a swivel. Going on up, we've got a crimp, bead, small swivel, bead and crimp. A little bit of play between the two to allow that swivel to move. Carrying on up, we've got exactly the same again at the top, where you've got your crimp, bead, bead, and your crimp at the top there. Again, swivel in the middle with a little bit of movement. The actual body of the rig, which is the bit that sort of holds it all together, wants to be a similar diameter to your shock leader. Um, if you're using a 50 pound shock leader, for instance, you want to really be using a 50 pound body. Uh, the reason for that is any sort of pressure put on your line by the cast and the weight is, is going to be plenty strong enough and it's not going to snap during the cast. It's a common problem that a lot of the anglers, particularly starting off, tend to make. The nice thing about the rig as well is without it being, being clipped down, um, it's very, very simple to, to use, very, very simple to make. Um, particularly for your white, it may be based up with a couple of pieces of mackerel there and, and pop it out. This is a pennel rig, uh, used throughout the country, beaches, piers, excellent rig. It, most one of the most used rig everywhere. I like this rig for fishing long range, fishing for cod, whitings, bass. This one is it clipped down to an impact lead. As it states, it's an, on hitting the water, it, the impact pushes the clip off and pushes your hook off every time, no problem. On this rig, we've got a spring. What this does, when your rig comes under pressure, as you can see, the spring takes all the stretch out of your snood. On normal conditions, if you don't use a spring, after 10, 15 casts, you find out your snood stretched and it won't clip down correctly for streamlined casting. So the spring takes the whole lot out for you. Very good. On the component side, you have a large swivel, preferably 80 pound plus, for your casting. As you come down, you have a, a smaller swivel, probably 50 pound, 60 pound swivel, with a small bead, onto a spring. Then you have a crimp, all the way down to a clip, which clips onto your lead. On your snood, you tie your snood in, then you have your, your two hooks. I like to use a bit of tubing to hold my top hook and my pen on. It, it works well. Some people just like to wrap line round, but to me, it doesn't mark your line, so it works well. Now then, Pete, we've got Powerflex tapered leaders. That's it. Brilliant leaders. Same as the Powerflex leaders, but this is in a tapered form where you get um, five leaders on a pack. Yeah, it's, um, it's well, as, as you know yourself, it goes from a very small diameter, which is often similar to your main line. Yes. And then when you, you, you sort of reel the whole leader on, um, it gradually tapers out into your shock leader. Right, yeah. So of course, you know, you sort of got that tiny little knot at the beginning, where yes. your diameters are exactly the same, and then tapers out to your, to your leader, and sort of, it does prevent 
weed build up improves your casting hugely and like to say on, on clean beaches i don't think there'd be, be any reason not to use these especially when you've got weed things like that on the beach where you can get your gear you can actually get your fish on the beach quicker and your leaders on your reel yeah weed particularly if you've got every bit of weed particularly in shores when you see these lads reeling in they've got a great big lump of weed on the lead or not and then they've got to handball the rest of the rig up yes which is often you know what 10 meters of yeah. shockley they're trying to pull up this of course goes straight through the end ring and up onto the reel and you get your fish straight in. Of course, say, we've been using this around the world as well as ours, haven't we? So it's it's a oh, good yeah. line, it's a very good line. Um, you get five leaders on a spool. Yeah, which is fantastic, it isn't is. it? You, know, you, t you can take one, and even in the worst conditions, you know, you, you're still gonna have, have them left coming home. Of course, and come in a, a range of sizes and colours. Yeah, they do, you know, sort of eight to 20, 12 to 30, 15 to 50, 15 to 60, and 18 to 70. Um, in crystal, fluoro yellow, sunset gold. You know, Perfect. something there for everybody. The beauty of the, 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 the nice bright ones as well and the heavier diameters as well. Easy to see, you know, in the dark. If you're fishing over night time, you've got a little lead lamp of course. on. You're using that orange leader. You can see it coming in as it's as you're it. in. Yeah, I do. So, like you say, an easy knot to tie, even for the average angler. It's, it's just uh, a nice knot, just two half bloods. It's, it's, it. it's, it's a shame one you're tying you up with, isn't it? Yeah. And you're just doubling it up and they're not small. You haven't got any fancy shock leader knots to tie it's not. just simple it's you know for me it's it is that's that's something i use all the time without question brilliant The rig I'm going to show you is a, a pulley panel rig. Um, this, this rig is um, designed to fish over a, a ground where you've got rocks and weed where you need to keep your lead up off the bottom when you're retrieving a fish. Um, the rig is constructed um, at a 60 pound Powerflex backbone, which is attached to a lead clipped uh, bait clip. Um, and on the trace above it then, you put a bead, a swivel, another bead, and a swivel on the other end, which is the attachment for your hook snud. Now the swivel in the middle, which slides up and down, is how the pulley is formed, and this one gets attached to your shock leader, as such. The easiest way to tie this is to slide a hook up the line and to tie a hook on the end. And when you put your bait on, what you do, you wrap the line several times around the shank of the hook and you nick it into the top of the bait. And when you've got your bait loaded, you hold it and you attach it to your bait clip on your lead. And now the trace is ready for casting. And when you've cast it out, the hooks come off the bait clip. And if you're lucky enough to catch a fish when you cast out, when you, when you retrieve the trace, what happens is the weight of the fish slides the lead up to the end of the shock leader. So when you're winding in, the lead is held above the bottom when you're dragging the fish in. So there it is, that's the pulley panel clip down rig, which is a tremendous rig for fishing over semi rough ground. This is the rotten bottom rig. This rig is essential to use over rough ground um, when you're trying to get your fish back um, I can't ex express how important it is to use a system where you can get rid of your lead because if you do manage to hook up a fish on your hook and you can't get your lead back it's an absolute nightmare because at the end of the day your main line snaps and the fish is stuck on the bottom and it can't swim away or whatever um, and it, it is so important to use one of these traces when fishing over rough ground the rig works like this you've got a lead weight with a a light piece of line attached. This line is six pound. How the rig works is the clip is pushed through the eye of the lead, as so, and it is folded back up the main line of the, the trace. And there is a tin hat on the line, which slips over the clip, holding the clip in place. Now this is ready for casting out. This tin hat will not come off when you cast in, but what happens is when it hits the water, water pressure pushes it up 
and out comes the clip releasing the rotten bottom system now what happens the lead weight sinks to the bottom it'll get caught up and when you retrieve after you've had a bite hopefully and you've got a fish on the hook you pull the line and the rotten bottom snaps and breaks away and what you're left with then is just the clip to wind back in with your fish on the hook the hook stud is attached to the backbone of the trace by a, a trap uh, trap swivel system which consists of a crimp a bead a swivel which the hook snud is attached to another bead above it and then another crimp and it is important that your hook line is not longer than the backbone of your trace because if you don't catch a fish your hook is above the rotten bottom system when you're winding in so your hook can't get caught caught up uh, in any weed or any rocks when you're retrieving